I finished reviewing the Secet SK Go. It is my best performing printer, but it's not quite that simple. I was fortunate enough to receive the very first of these. This is the SK Go from Secet. As far as I'm aware, Secet stands for second kit or something similar to that. The idea behind this printer is that it's your second 3D printer. You've already had one, you've learned the ropes, you know what you want, and then you get something with a quality construction like this. That means it's very customization and modification friendly. Normally when I review a 3D printer, it's my policy to review its stock to see how it performs out of the box. But it is a little bit different for this printer because of the philosophy of it. And I have made some minor modifications as I've went, as I will point out. As this was the first one, there has been some other changes in its development. In the interest of future-proofing this review, I'll point out where you need to go to find out the latest developments as well as what's ahead on the roadmap. But before we do that, let's recap some specifications. The best place to start is the store page on the Secet website. As you can see, this printer has been quite popular and is currently sold out, but you can join the waiting list. Common specs are 310 by 310 in the XY plane, using linear rails and Core XY motion system. Things you might not have noticed are the ACM brackets and back panels, which are not acrylic, but instead have a metal surface. There's a bunch of other details you can read up on, but what I really like is the way you can customize your package. Firstly, you can choose between either 300 or 350 millimeters in the Z direction. You can choose the color of your frame. You can choose whether you want cheaper linear rails or genuine high wind linear rails. And anytime you make these changes, the price will automatically update in the corner to help you keep track. There's a choice of mainboard, including self-sourcing to save money if you've already got one lying around. My printer was tested with this Triangle Lab BMG clone extruder and also has this 3mm bed with AC powered heater. You have a choice of build plate and if you want to save some money, you can print the plastic parts yourself and that'll also help speed up the order. Finally, we have a chance to select our country to make sure we get the right plug and be able to get a shipping estimate. Depending on the options you choose, this printer is either just under or just over the price of a Creality CR10S Pro. Now back when I got this, I already filmed and released a video on the build and first prints. The build took me most of a day and it had pretty good instructions that have since been refined further. In that video, I got straight into printing, starting with a humble calibration cube, which was pretty good quality. I then set up Linear Advance, reprinted the cube and found that the quality was even better. I did release my process in a video guide on Linear Advance, so be sure to check it out. Also in that video, I did this 3D Benchy and I think this is the best one I've ever printed on any of my machines. It doesn't suffer from any cooling problems on the underside. It doesn't have any stringing, any surface artifacts. It's just a really, really good benchy. Next up for my Halloween video, I attempted to print this mask, but I had the first of my failures on this machine. I was experimenting with the printer profile, had Z hop on and at a really high speed. What looked like a partially clogged extruder turned out to be skipped steps on the Z axis. I lowered the speed, turned off Z hop, and then I produced this. This is printed at only the standard 0.2 millimeter layer height and until you get up really close, it looks like it's done on a resin printer. The extrusion is extremely consistent and highly detailed. There's only two real problems I can see with it. One are some loose loops where they were printed in midair without support. The other are a couple of horizontal lines spread throughout the print, but overall you'd have to say this thing is pretty stunning. Paying to have a 6mm tooling plate bed is an option not yet available for the printer at the time of review. Therefore, I've got a pretty standard bed and it does have a slight warp. Around this time, I released my updated guide on manual mesh bed leveling. I could have fitted a BL Touch or another type of auto bed leveling probe, but I decided I wanted to keep the print head as light as possible to take advantage of the Core XY architecture. My next couple of prints benefited greatly from this where I printed a couple of full plates of these mini F1 car models. The mesh bed leveling did the job well, with only one casualty across the prints. The little details on these cars have been refined well, and the primary school kids who got them as prizes were very happy to receive them. The real torture test was this chain mail, and this is an extremely difficult print because there's so many individual shapes that touch the bed with a small contact patch. Once again, save for a few casualties, this chain mail turned out fantastic. 
Currently, I have this printer configured as direct drive, but it did come with all of the parts that I could set it up with a Bowden tube remote extruder setup if that's the way I wanted to go. Generally, when reviewing a printer, I like to do something in VARS mode because when you hold it up to the light, you can see how even the extrusion is. This one here was done with X3D Smooth PLA. I featured the black version in my review of the Cetus Mark III. This here is red version, which is equally stunning. Great filament and great print quality are hand in hand to create a really stunning print. Around this time, I had my second failed print and it wasn't pretty. This one was completely my fault as I was experimenting with the bed position and didn't tighten up the screws. The printer did receive a few battle scars from this, including a tear in the PEI sticker sheet, mangled wiring to the part cooling fan, and a snapped mount to the part cooling fan duct. Now the reason I was experimenting with bed position was to use all of the available space. And when you put this thing together, you have a choice of an A and a B position for the Y axis linear rails. After my testing, I'd recommend having them further towards the back of the printer, as illustrated here. My next print was this tolerance test in the form of this two-part pyramid. This is an old design on Thingiverse that I hadn't come across yet, but I'm sure to use it again in the future. The perimeters on this were reproduced exactly how you would like, apart from a little bit of cooling issues on the top. But what stops the two parts from separating and twisting cleanly is some poor extrusion on the underside of the very steep overhangs. I've got a gut feeling that I haven't quite positioned the part cooling fan duct correctly after gluing it back on. Time for some flexibles, and with the Bontec clone extruder in direct drive, this was an absolute piece of cake. I turned off the heated bed, but I forgot to slow down the speed, which means this was printed with a base speed of 80 millimeters per second, and it had zero issues. This TPU is not the most flexible one you can get, but judging by the printer's performance, simply by slowing down the print speed, it should be able to accommodate much softer filament. Next up was PETG, and I don't have the print here because it's a functional print that I designed that is now doing its job very well. I needed a simple but strong hook to hold some gym equipment off the ground, so I modeled one up, printed it in PETG, with the result being another good looking print, but also highly functional. It's now been at work for a couple of weeks now with no signs of failing. Time to test my last material, and that was ABS. And this is an open frame machine. So when I tried to print these large flat pieces, they inevitably warped and peeled off. I switched to something more realistic, which was a series of these small calibration tools from upcoming video. When printed in a group, we still had some warping on the corners, but if you print one at a time, they turn out quite well. This printer is capable of using ABS, but the usual limitations do apply to an open frame machine. So that was my printing finished with a mix of materials and styles, so time for my summary. I've used a lot of FDM 3D printers now, and this one in terms of print quality is the best, simple as that. It's fast, precise, and capable. In future, if I need a part printed at the highest quality possible, I'm gonna do it on this SK Go. In fact, the only real complaint I have about this machine as I've tested are the noisy fans. But as I said at the start, it's really not that simple because this printer is a product of a one-man company building everything from the ground up. One advantage is that Ernest knows the printer inside and out. There's some great resources on GitHub, including a version of the firmware with some customization already in place to make this printer easy to tweak. But as you might expect, there's also been teething problems and growing pains. There have been some issues with parts, for instance, Z-axis belts that were too small or crimped connectors that weren't crimped that well. Ernest has had to deal with making decisions on suppliers, parts, and what level of after sale support he offers. Throughout all of this, I would say he is very active on his Facebook group and he's constantly communicating, updating, and seeking feedback from his customers and potential customers. If you are considering one of these printers, looking in the Facebook group is probably the best thing you can do to see the direction the product is headed. I personally have no way of knowing where exactly this printer will end up after some evolution, but what I do know is that the base components, the bespoke parts for the motion system, and the overall design philosophy is very sound. It's not aimed at a beginner, but could a beginner use it? Well, yes and no. The assembly is pretty long, and you do have to deal with mains wiring. It could be done, but ideally this printer would be used by someone who already understands 3D printing, likes doing modifications, tweaking, and optimizing the package. Someone just like me, and that's probably why I like it so much. With that in mind, I will be doing a series of further modifications on this printer, including fitting a Duet Maestro board and matching LCD. 
you'll be seeing a lot more of this printer in the future. So if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to do or any more questions about my experience, please leave them down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.